Well, good morning, everybody. Once again on Theology Theology Thursday, Thursday. here we are, and uh, we hope you've been enjoying it. We've been getting some feedback since we've gone back to uh, being able to gather on a Sunday morning. We've had a few people say, hey, I hope you don't stop Theology Thursday. Very interesting. So that's that's what we're aiming for, hoping it's interesting and informative for you. And, uh, and, uh, you know, it's something now that we're back at church, you know, we're, we're back having communion and our communion's changed in our church because of the COVID restrictions. We, we've gone to those little um, self-contained, yeah. you know, there's the bread and wine all together. And you You've really got to work at getting that little exactly. bit of bread out there. It sounds, it yeah. sounds really funny at, at that time when everybody's peeling back the plastic all over the auditorium. And uh, I know certainly in our church, uh, back in, in my church when I was in Tasmania, um, we had, uh, we did communion uh, once a month in big church and uh, encourage people to do it all the time in, uh, you know, in, in their houses. And, and of course, my, my Anglican background, um, they, they, used to, uh, they used to do it all the time and, and, uh, and different Anglican churches sort of referred to it in different ways. But, uh, you know, you'd hear this word banded around or bandied around called the sacrament. The we're sacrament, we're yeah. about to take the sacrament. So how would you define the word Sacrament, Dave? Well, a sacrament is defined as a visible sign of an inward grace or an invisible grace. And that word grace can be gift. Sure. Uh, Especially, uh, the dictionary says, especially if it's associated with the Christian rite instituted by Christ, uh, to either symbolise, and this is a a thing that's important, it either symbolises or confers a divine gift or grace. Oh, so it's quite a serious thing. It it can certainly be. The the English word sacrament comes from the Latin sacramentum, uh, which means to make holy or to consecrate. So a sacrament is something that is holy or sacred. Yeah, and you know, this is something that I actually, I don't know if it was because of my background or just, you know, I have a real respect for the word and for, you know, all things Jesus. So, um, you know, it does, does irritate me when I see people uh, you know, taking communion or, or treating communion with triviality or Absolutely. not seriousness or yeah. baptism or um, one of the other sort of, you know, sacraments. So for me, you know, we've got to remember that, you know, like you said, it actually is derived from the word sacred. Yep. Um, you know, it, it is a sacred thing. And, and I think also sacraments are ceremonial yeah. uh, just by nature, which makes them different from other things that Jesus told his followers to do, like Go and make disciples of all nations. Sure, love one uh, another. Yeah, yeah. but uh, a sacrament is something that is specifically... It's a ceremony. Ceremonial. Yeah, yeah. wow. Um, the number of sacraments and the names of them according you know, vary according to denomination. That's now. right. Because I know there's like in with us and with most Protestant churches, the two big ones are communion and baptism. Yeah. But but according to Catholics, there are others, aren't there? Yeah, there's seven. Um, and, and they cover a person from birth right through to, to death. Yeah. So they have baptism uh, as an sure. infant, then they have confirmation, then the Eucharist or communion, yeah. um, marriage or matrimony cool. is, is a sacrament, yeah. um, holy orders, that's ordination, um, and then penance, which is confession or reconciliation um, in the Catholic Church, and anointing of the sick. Uh, extreme unction, mm. so last rites are included. Last rites, yeah. That, so it covers from baptism as an infant right through to last rites. So essentially um, they're all like a sacred ceremony within... Within the Catholic within the system. Catholic. Uh, yeah. Some, not the Catholics, but some add foot washing yeah. as another, another sacrament. I've done that. Yeah. I've done foot washing. Yeah. I, think I didn't realise it was a sacrament, <laughs> Cause, uh, but it was, well, still, it was still a moving thing. Yeah, it was, it's it was... not to most people, but certainly it is in some. It, yeah, is in some sure. um, it was the Council of Trent way back in the, the mid-16th century that gave that definition of, yeah. of a visible sign of invisible grace. Um, but Christians have differed widely as to the meaning of the sacraments sure. and, and how God works through them. Um, Catholics and many Protestants consider them, as we said a moment ago, as actually the means of grace. So that's the, the way that God bestows a spiritual blessing uh, is through the sacraments, uh, while others say, and we'd come into yeah. that, uh, are signs of, of Christian profession and testimony to a grace that has already been given through sure. faith. Yeah, so we, we, we see it as... as 
you know, purely a sign. It's, it's symbolic. Um, it has no, you know, power in and of itself. Yep. Whereas some people think it, that these ceremonies actually do have power yeah, the, in and of themselves. That it imparts grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From God. Yeah. Well, um, I, I think, I think you've, you know, they, you can really border on, um, some people border on superstition when it comes I, to that I sort think of thing. So, yeah. um, um, and that's, we, we wouldn't agree with that. No, we, we, we say that um, it doesn't in itself impart grace. In other mm -hmm. words, you can still get to heaven even if you haven't been baptised or if you've never had communion. And that's particularly good news for the thief on the cross. Um, Absolutely. Because if you can only get to heaven as a result of participating in something like communion yeah. or baptism, then, of course, uh, yeah. he was doomed. That's, well, that's why I, I, I distinguish. I, I often make the distinction between uh, water baptism and actual baptism. Meaning, like, actual baptism is something that happens in your heart. Yep. You're baptized into Jesus. You're baptized into his kingdom. You, you know, and it's a, it's a thing that happens in your heart, soul, spirit. Uh, water baptism, as separate to that, is a distinction from that, is the symbol of it. Yep. It's like, let's, let's do a water baptism to symbolize your spiritual baptism, if you like. Yeah, it's, it becomes the ceremony the, yeah. um, of yeah. something that has happened. So communion, for example, is not in itself something that brings salvation uh, to somebody, but mm. it is commanded. Um, yeah. And we've been commanded to do it. Um, we haven't been told how often, by the way, but we've been told to do it. So, so uh, well, go, hey, you know, said that, <laughs> you know, 1 Corinthians 11, Jesus says, you know, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So does that mean like we've got to do it every time we meet together and have a drink? Does it mean every time we meet together on a Sunday for church? Is how old? What do you think? Like it doesn't actually. Nobody knows exactly it, it, what. Different it, churches have different approaches to that. Um, some say well, it was part of the Passover. That only happens once a year. So and they only have yeah. communion once a year in their church. Um, would, some have would, every, would those guys do it on like Good Friday or Passover time around? It varies. Uh, well, they just have a particular Sunday, which is a communion Sunday. Yeah, right. I, I don't think that denominations that do that. Uh, impose a particular uh, date. Yeah. Not as far as I know. Sure. Um, but to, to actually have it at some point um, is, is not a matter of choice for Christians. Uh, and the same goes for baptism. Well, actually, before you go on to baptism, I my take on it is, you know, Jesus said, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So we know the purpose of it is to remind us of his grace. It's like a great... A grace reminder, you know, just in case you start getting legalistic, just in case you start thinking you're pretty hot, you know, you're pretty good, just in case you start thinking Jesus loves me because I've been at church all week. You, this is a reminder. No, 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 no. Remember, it's what he did on the cross. That's where your salvation comes. So I would have thought because it's a reminder, he specifically says, do this often as you drink it in remembrance of it. Because it's a reminder, then the more the merrier. I don't think you can have communion too often. Yeah, um, like keep reminding so, yourself. I mean, in some Catholic churches, for example, um, people have it every day. You know, the yeah, priest certainly sure. has it every day. Um, but it's important that we don't raise the sacrament uh, above Scripture itself. Um, sure. You know, the sacrament is, is essentially visibly portraying what the Bible has said verbally. Yeah. Um, so... Here at our church, at NLCC, we accept two sacraments, communion and baptism. Yep. Uh, lots of churches have different names for communion, for example. Yes. Um, That's well, when I, I, went, I worked for a little while in a, um, in a very high church, you know, in a high Anglican church. We had the robes and we had all of the bits of it. And we called it the Eucharist. Yep. Where does that come from? Well... Let, let's firstly communion. Let, let's answer that one first, okay. and then we'll then we'll do the Eucharist. Um, communion. The, oh, by the way, the words, no matter what you call it, they all mean the same thing. Same, right? same. Um, but communion uh, it is derived from the Latin word communio, which means to share, to have in common, uh, and and the concept is joining together of minds and spirits. The early church described this as uh, as koinonia, as yeah. having fellowship, um, joining of. Sure. of uh, of so we get our word community yeah and, and, yeah. and that, that common communication um, yeah. um, so we gather to share the bread and wine of communion and we have this concept of 
of fellowship and sharing in, in common, our hearts and minds joined together to focus on what the bread and the wine symbolise. Some people add the word holy, holy communion, that oh. makes it sound better. Um, yes, it, is. it adds definition, you know, the, the fellowship that we yeah. share is, is uniquely set apart to remind us of what Jesus like did on the cross. I like it. Yeah. Um, the Eucharist that you mentioned comes from the Greek word eucharistia. Uh, and oh, okay, so, that so means... the communion wine is a Greek word. Yeah, and, and, and this, Latin. Oh, sorry, Latin. Yeah, and and this, one, this what Eucharist yeah, is a Greek word. And, gotcha. and it means thanksgiving. And one of the things that we do when we share the bread and wine of communion is we celebrate what Christ did for us on the cross. Yeah. Um, and so there is a sense of thanksgiving we express to God our our thanks for, for what he did. Um, others call it the Lord's Supper because Jesus instant. Oh, when I grew up, it was always yeah. the Lord's Supper um, yeah. because Jesus instituted at the Passover meal, which was called the Supper, um, and he shared that with his disciples before he was crucified. Or the Lord's Table. The Lord's Table, yeah. The Lord's Table, it was his yeah. table. Yeah, right, it was instituted by yeah. the Lord. So the name really is not all that important. No. Each has an appropriate meaning uh, and it refers to, to this sacrament. But what about the bread and wine? Now, Peter, growing up in an Anglican scene, um, is it just bread and wine? Some people believe well, that God makes them turn yeah. into... Yeah, well, see, in my, in my uh, particular tradition, we were from uh, a part of the Anglican church that was very Bible-based, evangelical, and so, yes, they agree. They're, they're the same as where we are and in terms of... That, that it is purely symbolic. It is sacred still. Don't, and I'd like to make that distinction as yep. well. Don't, don't mistake symbolism or, or purely symbolic uh, sacrament uh, as being not important or, you know, just trivialize it. Like I said, this is still a sacred act, especially since Jesus himself commanded us to do it. He said, go and, yep. uh, you know, baptize people. There's one. And go and, and do this. Uh, you know, take communion. 1 Corinthians 11 tells that Jesus that. says this. Do this. So, so we must treat it with respect uh, all the time. But in our tradition, we just saw it. I've always seen it as purely symbolic. Um, but you're right. I do have friends that see it as that next level up. You know, the, the Roman Catholic Church... Um believes that the bread and wine actually turn into the body and blood of Christ when the priest blesses them. Yeah. Um, some others, like the Lutherans, believe that uh, the bread and wine becomes the body uh, and blood of Christ after we consume yeah. them. Um, and there's a couple of a couple of fancy words for that. There's One is transubstantiation and the other is consubstantiation. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so, yet yeah, parts of the Anglican Church do believe in consubstantiation, which is... The Lutheran uh, model. Yeah, the Lutheran model that it, it doesn't become... It isn't, you know, once the priest blesses it, it isn't, part, it isn't actual flesh and blood of Jesus, but, uh, but it does become that inside yeah. you. Or, or it's, it's like that next level up. It's spiritually very powerful. It, it imparts something. Well, the next one down from that, um, I, I guess saying down is the wrong way, but um, yeah. so some churches believe that the bread and wine bring a spiritual presence of Christ into our lives when we take them, while others, and I think we're in that category, um, believe that the bread and wine are really just symbols. Yeah. Uh, they're reminders. Of very powerful reminders, yeah. very potent reminders, and remember, sacred reminders, yep. but still purely reminders. So when Jesus first instituted the broken bread as his body and the wine as his blood, he was using ordinary unleavened bread during the Passover ceremony, the so, Seder. Let me stop you there. Yep. Why unleavened? Well, that was because it was part of the Passover and um, uh, they have unleavened bread. That's but it. why did God tell them not to put leaven in it? Well, the main reason is that leaven takes, uh, yeast takes a while to make the bread rise. And they were leaving Egypt in the Passover. And he said, you've got to make it in, in haste. You've got to do it quickly. So you don't have time to allow it. So it's got to be unleavened. Um, and that had to be cooked at, at high heat. These days, it's 12 minutes. You yes. know, 12 minutes on high heat. Um, and when you make those little bits of, of bread, what happens is that they start to... Um, to expand and, and almost blow up. So you've got to actually go through it and put um, pricks in them all the way through. So, so that bread that Jesus said is my body, it's pierced. And that's why 
Sure. Because that's, you have to do it that way to cook. And of course, by doing that, it also leaves stripes on it. So the bread is, is striped, and, striped pierced. and pierced. And of course, in the New Testament, for at, at another level, um, Jesus referred to yeast, uh, the yeast of as the Pharisees, sin. as sin. And he says, a little bit of yeast works through the whole, whole batch of yep. dough. And of course, the bread represents Jesus, who is sinless. So is it possible that even 1,500 years before Jesus, God said to his people, I want you to make bread like this because in his mind that the yeast represented sin and Jesus is sinless. So don't put any yeast in this. History is his story. Yeah. And so so that's why, you know, that's, there's a couple of reasons, a uh, very practical reason, but the spiritual reason as well as to why it's unleavened. Anyway, where were you up to yeah, okay. before, yeah, I, before I so rudely interrupted you? Uh, I was saying we use ordinary unleavened uh, bread uh, in the Passover ceremony. Um, and, and I guess it's a little bit like if I drew a picture on a bit of paper and showed you that bit of paper and I said, this is, uh, this is my house, um, I, I'm sure you wouldn't suggest that I was saying I live on this piece of paper. No. Rather, I was just drawing an illustration that represents my house in some way. The sign or the symbol, whether it's bread or wine, is not to be confused with the thing that mm. that it signifies. Um, well, I have I have a very Catholic um, in-law family, and my mother-in-law, uh, you know, she said, no, it is actually the bread, the blood and body of Jesus, because Jesus didn't say, this represents my body, this represents my blood. He said, this, this is in John chapter 6, this is my body, this is my blood. So that's where she thinks, yeah. therefore, and, that's, and I said, well, he also said, I am the gate. You know, I am the door. You're not suggesting that he is a piece of wood with hinges and a handle. Uh, you know, so in the same way, like your, your yeah. illustration of drawing a, a house, that Jesus didn't mean it's my actual. That's and, how we read it and, anyway. And you've got to remember that the, he did this with the disciples sitting there and gave them the bread and said, this is my body uh, for you. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the disciples certainly could tell the difference between the bit of bread and the body of Jesus, who was actually handing them that piece mm. of bread and, and cup. Um, so they could see that it signified, mm. it represented, it was sure. a symbol of his body uh, and blood. Um, and we uh, believe that Jesus was doing the same thing with the bread and wine in the Passover. He was saying it just represents, mm. represents his body. Um, mm. And of, of course, um, the bread that he chose wasn't just any bread, and I think that's important. It yeah. does have very special significance in the Passover ceremony, and yeah. and the cup that he took was a very specific cup. The, yeah. the third one. That's so we, we, we don't want to go. We don't have time no, to go into we, it all. But suffice to say, if you've never seen a, a Jewish Passover feast, there's they have several pieces of bread. Three. Uh, three pieces, and one of them in particular represented. Uh, is the one Jesus took. So, the middle one. Yeah. It's quite And they also have several cups of wine, yeah. and he took a specific cup, not just any old cup. That's the closest one. No, no. He took a specific one, and both of these elements, the bread and the wine that he chose, were very significant yeah. to a Jewish person. Yeah. And, uh, and so we, we won't go into it today, right. but, um, but do yourself a favor, do, do a little bit of research and say, which bread did Jesus take? Which cup did Jesus take? And, and uh, you'll find that even though that, that Passover feast was instituted by God 1,500 years before Jesus, uh, it was still pointing yep. towards him. Yep. And, uh, and he fulfilled so many of those little symbolic things throughout the whole Exodus story. It's incredible. It's so incredible. essentially the bread and wine of communion remain bread and wine. Uh, yeah. And the, the water of baptism is quite simply tap water. Or yeah. with, with us, it's the good old Marucci uh, yes, River. Yes, the river or the beach. Uh, that's it. Um, and, and that sort of demythologizes the whole idea yeah. of sacraments. Um, we don't imagine that because we've seen a sign when we're driving along the Bruce Highway that, that says Brisbane, we don't think, ah, I've arrived, we pull up no. at the side of the road. That's just the we sign. We know it's a sign and yeah. it's pointing uh, to somebody uh, or something. Um, and, and that's the way it was when Jesus introduced them. They were symbols, mm. reminders of what they are to us today. Um, the, they symbolise the divine grace, the gift that mm. God has given to us when we received and we accepted that his death 
was for our sin. We received redemption that was made possible through his blood uh, on the cross. So um, the blessings are, are, are promised in the sacraments. They're, they're, um, there are things that, that Jesus associates uh, with that. Um, and these are not mechanically or automatically conveyed. These are blessings which are associated with the sacraments, mm -hmm. but the blessings are not conveyed simply because we get close sure. to them or even no. get involved with them. The blessings that, that you know, Jesus promised um, come by faith. Uh, and this is why the sacrament's important, though. So it comes by faith, not by taking the bread, but by taking the bread and wine, we remind ourselves of what he's done. We remind ourselves again, we, it's a point of faith where we go, oh, that's right. Jesus died on the cross for this. Jesus cried on the, on the, died on the cross for my healing. He, he died on the cross for, uh, for my provision. He died on the cross, especially for my salvation. And, and, um, and so I remember those things. As I remember them, my faith rises and therefore I'm open to those blessings that Dave's referring to. So the blessings come by my faith. But these are little things that Jesus said, trust this will help you. This will help you. If, you want, if you, you're lacking faith, this will remind you. Let this remind you as you take that bread, as you drink that, that wine, let it remind you of what I have won for you on the cross. Let it remind you. Don't just take it mindlessly. Make, take it mindfully. Remember, say, Jesus died on the cross. He took my sin. He took my infirmities. He he. he he died to open the way for me. He, he became a curse so that I couldn't, I wouldn't be under the curse anymore. Remind yourself of these things and, and feel your faith rise. It's a bit like when somebody reads the Bible. The Bible is full of blessing, uh, God's blessing and his promises. But we don't get those promises just because we read the Bible. We get them uh, because sure. we have a personal faith response. Absolutely. That's, that's Even Jesus said in John 5, you know, you diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you have, the, you have eternal life. Yet these are the scriptures that talk about me and yet you refuse to come to me. So, you know, it's the same thing. We can, you can read the, the scriptures uh, mindlessly or you can read them mindfully. And, and with faith and apply your faith to what the promises uh, That's say. It. It's all about so, faith. Neither being baptised nor taking communion will ever impart salvation. Um, we need our own personal faith sure. to do that. So that's a little bit about the sacraments. Very good, very good. Hey, um, you know, I just wanted to reiterate one last time as we finish up that, um, you know, please don't ever view the sacraments as, as unimportant or trivial. Uh, Jesus did command us to do them, so they must be important to him. And they are powerful things. They are powerful ceremonies that remind us, points of faith that help us in our faith. I, I have to say, I, I've been in churches um, where... It's really trivialized by the church, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's just wrong. Let's not do that. Uh, yeah, we we really make it something that mm -hmm. is meaningful. It is. On the flip side, let's not become superstitious yep. and uh, and start thinking that uh, they're magical. Um, you know, they are purely symbolic, but they are powerful um, reminders for us. So God bless you. Yeah. And uh, next time you take communion. Uh, or the sacrament, or the Eucharist. And if you haven't been baptised, yes, get, get into in, it. Get in touch with this guy. Get into it. God bless you. Have an amazing week. Bless you.